Hello again everyone, and welcome back to Linode. In today's video, what we're going to do is set up our own FTP server. Specifically, we'll be using VSFTPD to accomplish this goal. And in this video, I'll be showing you how to set up this server every step of the way. So without any further delay, let's just go ahead and get right into it. In this video, we're going to walk through the entire process, so let's get started. Now the first thing you should take care of is making sure that your server is up to date. I'll just assume that you've already done that. There's other videos on this channel that show you the process of installing updates, so I'll leave that up to you. Assuming that you have all the latest and greatest updates on your system, we can go ahead and continue. Now in case your repository index might be stale, what we're going to do right now is run sudo apt update. This is just going to make sure that the local cache or the local index of the repositories that are associated with the server are up to date as of the time that we're running this command, so I'll press enter. And now that that's done, what we could do is install the packages that are required for our project that we're working on today. So we'll run sudo apt install, and we're going to install a number of packages. The first one is vsftpd. We'll install ftp itself, and we'll also make sure that ufw is installed. Now it's possible that UFW might already be installed, but we'll just make sure. So we can see here that UFW was already installed and FTP was already installed as well. Anyway, I'll press enter to install the remaining packages. This should make sure that we have everything that we need. And if a message like this shows up, we could just press enter. That should be good enough. And now the required packages are installed. Now the next thing that I'm going to do is check the status of VSFTPD. I want to make sure that it's running and it's enabled. I run systemctl, status, and then VSFTPD, just like that. And as you can see here, it's enabled and it's running. Now as an aside, if for some reason it was showing disabled, you can see near the top of the screen it shows enabled. That means that it's going to start when the server starts. But if for some reason that's not the case, what you could do is run sudo systemctl, and then you could use the keyword enable, and then vsftpd. I don't need to run that, obviously, because it's already enabled, so that would just be a waste of CPU cycles. Now, if for some reason it's not running on your side, you can see here on my server it shows active and running in green. That's a good sign. But if that's not the case and it's not running, then you can start the process by running the command that you see right here. Now the next thing we're going to do is create an FTP user. And we'll call that user FTP underscore client. That's going to be the user that's going to handle the FTP related tasks for us. So what I'm going to do is run the command right now. So what we'll do is run sudo user add dash m and then FTP underscore and then client. That's the name of the user that we're creating here. So I'll press enter. Next, what we'll do is set a password for that user. And I've set the password for the user on my side. Just make sure you use a very strong randomly generated password because you wanna make sure that only authorized people are saving files to your FTP server. Next, what we're going to do is create a sample file. And actually, we'll be creating this file in the home directory for the FTP user that we've just set up. To do that, we'll run sudo and then dash u for user. We want to run this command as FTP underscore client, same user that we've just created. And then what we'll run is sh and then dash c. Next, we'll type the remainder of the command in single quotes here. And that's going to be echo and then double quote. After that, we're going to type a greater than symbol to redirect the output to a file. Again, we'll be creating the file in the home directory for the FTP client user, which is going to be slash home slash FTP underscore client slash test file dot txt. So I'll press enter and we should be good to go on that. Now to test this out, we should actually use an FTP client to check to see whether or not that file is actually present. But to keep it simple, what I'll do is just use the FTP command against localhost. 
So that way I could test to make sure that it's working without actually having to open up a web browser or an FTP client. I'm just using an FTP client on the command line here. So I'll press enter. Let's see what happens. I'll type FTP underscore client as the username. Otherwise it would have used J in my case is my username. That's not what I want. Now it needs the password. So I'll type that in. It's the same password we set up for the FTP client user. So I've entered it. I'll press enter. It says login successful. That's a good sign. And now we have the FTP prompt. So what I'll do is type ls, then slash home slash FTP underscore client. And as you can see here, testfile.txt is shown in the output. So if I didn't know any better, I would think we actually have a real FTP server right here. Now when we're done working with FTP, we can simply type exit just like that. That takes us right back to the command line. And then we can move on to the next step. Now next, what I'd like to show you guys is how you restart the FTP server. If you change configuration or anything like that, you will need to restart the FTP service in order for the changes to take effect. And the way that you go about doing that is you'll type sudo and then systemctl. We'll use the keyword restart. And the service that will restart is the VS FTPD service. Just like that. And what I could do just to make sure that it actually did restart is I could check the status of that. And as you can see here, the process has been started as of nine seconds ago. So yeah, it was restarted. Now, as far as configuration is concerned, there's a default configuration file already on the system. It was installed as of the time we installed VSFTPD as well. And it's located in the Etsy directory. And the file name will be vsftpd.conf. As you can see, it is present on the system here. So what I'm going to do is actually make a backup copy of this file. That way, if something goes wrong, we could always return to the default file. So I'll type sudo and then cp for copy. We want to copy that file to a new name. And we'll copy it into the same directory, but with a different name. give it an extension of dot back, short for backup. I think that should do the trick. And then what we'll do right now is open up that file in an editor. The original file specifically. And here it is. Now in this case, what we could do is scroll through this file and see if there's something that we might want to change. And right here, we actually see the config line that enables the local FTP client to log in, which is what we did earlier. So that's interesting. And it really doesn't matter what change you make to this file. You could just go through this file and find something that you might want to tweak. And then once you find it, what you could do is save the file. It's control O to open the save dialog and then enter to save the file. I didn't actually make any changes though, so I won't be doing that. I'll just cancel with control C and then exit with control X. But on your end, you could save the file with control O and then enter and then control X to go back to the command line. And I've already showed you the command that you would use to restart the FTP service as soon as you do make some changes to that file. And again, that was this one right here, but I'm not going to restart the service on my end because I didn't make any changes, but the thing is, now you know how to make changes. You can edit that file, make whatever changes you want to make. And once you've done that, you can restart your VSFTPD service with this command right here. But you know what? Let's go ahead and actually implement a change right now. I think that's probably the best way to learn. So let's get that file back into our text editor and see what we could do. So the first thing we want to do is make sure that anonymous enable is equal to no. In this case, it already is. On your end, just be sure that this is disabled. We definitely don't want people to upload files to our FTP server or worse, delete files if we have anonymous access enabled. So that's disabled by default here. Depending on your distribution, that might be different. But in my case, I think I'm going to go on that setting at least. I already mentioned local enable. It's set to yes. That's why we were able to use the local authentication to get to the FTP server. Basically, this means a user can be on the system and access the FTP server that's on that same system. Now here, what we're going to do is uncomment this line right here. 
which is going to provide access to making changes to files that's stored within FTP. It says right above this that we want to uncomment this if we want to enable any form of FTP writing, which is exactly what we probably want to do. Unless, of course, you are setting up a read-only FTP server, and in that case, you'd probably want to leave this disabled. But that does constitute a legitimate change. So I'll save the file again, Control O and then Enter, and then Control X to exit out. And let's go ahead and restart the service to make sure that all the changes that we've made, in my case, I only really made one, but we definitely want to make sure that those changes are applied. And I'll restart it. If we check the status, to see whether or not it restarted properly, it probably did. Most of the time it'll give you an error. Not always though, we definitely want to check this. And it is running. Now if it shows anything other than running on your side, then I would check the config file to make sure that you don't have any typos in that file. But on my side, so far so good. Now what I'm going to do is show you some of the functionality of the FTP server. For now I'm going to use the local authentication method. And the next example is going to be downloading a file. So again, I'll type FTP and then localhost. And we'll use the same username this time. FTP underscore client. Type the password. And we have a successful login. So far, so good. So what we're going to do is change directory into the directory that contains the file that we might want to download. So I'll go into the home directory for the FTP underscore client user. And what we'll do is type git, then the file name, in this case, testfile.txt, I'll press enter. And of course, it's already complete. It was just a simple text file, so that was quick. And then once we're done, we just simply type exit. And as you can see here, we have the test file locally. If you recall, this was underneath the home directory for the FTP client user. But since I downloaded this with my local user here, then I have access to this file too. If I cat the contents of it, you can see right here that it includes the contents that we added to the file earlier. Now let's go ahead and work through an example of uploading a file. For this, I'm just going to go into the temp directory. And what I'll do is just like last time, I'll use the echo command. So I have a simple sentence there and I will redirect the output of this to a file and I'll call it testfile2.txt. So let's go ahead and get that file uploaded. Again, I'll type FTP and then localhost to connect to the local server here. I'll type the same username that I've been using so far, the FTP client user, and then its password. And now we're logged in. Now to upload a file into an FTP server, we could use the command put, just like that. And the file that we want to add to FTP is the one that we've just created. It's in our local working directory on the Linux command line side of things. So we should only need to type the file name here. And we saved it as testfile2.txt. And if this works, it should actually upload that file to the FTP server. Let's see what happens. And that's exactly what it did. Because that file was so small, it made the process nearly instantaneous. Anyway, that was successful, so I'll type exit. And then I'll go back to my home directory. Now, if you want to enable access externally, then I'm going to show you how to do that right now. So what we could do is type sudo ufw, and then allow SSH, just like that. We want to allow access to the server via SSH, which you may already have, but we just want to make sure. So the rules were updated. Next, what we're going to do is run sudo and then ufw again. We want to allow some traffic. And we want to allow traffic from any. And then to any. And then via ports 20 and 21 with a protocol, or proto for short, of TCP. Now what we're going to do is enable the firewall. Just make sure that you've enabled SSH before you run this command, otherwise you might actually lock yourself out. 
So I'll answer yes to this prompt right here. It's just giving us a warning that if we've done anything wrong, it's going to lock us out. I've already gave you that disclaimer myself, actually. And now here we are. And now that we've added that firewall rule, what we could do from this point forward is access our FTP server with an actual FTP client. I mean, we already did that, but the difference this time is we could download an FTP client to our workstation and actually access our FTP server from that workstation instead of just using the local client, we can now access it via a remote client as well. Anyway, this video was a lot of fun. In this video, we set up our own FTP server using VSFTPD. We walked through the entire process, so at this point, you should have your very own FTP server. Did this video help you out? If it did, then please click that like button to let YouTube know that this video helped you out. That helps the algorithm and algorithm type things happen. And in the meantime, be sure to subscribe. There's some awesome content coming very soon, and I'll see you again very soon in the next video.